Siddharth Porohit, uh, Senior Equity Research Analyst Banking at Angel Broking is now joining us. Siddharth, good morning. Can you just tell us for 2017 with the sort of uh, correction that we have seen in NBFC and banks, uh, they essentially now become an overweight? Uh, see, uh, if you remember, Pankaj, I had been a little cautious about the BFSI space and particularly the uh, PSU space uh, for quite some time. And uh, the situation was supposed to improve in the second half of uh, this financial year, but it has rather deteriorated. Now, the stocks have corrected both the banks as well as NBFC, but there is reason behind that. The quality of asset what they had advanced has deteriorated in the meantime, and also the uh, quantum of growth or the momentum of growth has decelerated to a large extent. Now, if you uh, look at uh, yesterday's financial stability report in uh, what RBI has published also is indicating that uh, the stress level in the entire banking system is not going to go down either. It is rather going to go up in the near term. Maybe in the next six months probably we'll see that the entire banking system's NPA, which has already gone up from 7.8% in March uh, 2016, it has already reached 9.1% for the entire banking system and it could hit 9.8%. Uh, that's what the RBA is saying. And possibly it will cross uh, like, you know, maybe, you know, 10% plus by next year. So the outlook for the entire sector is really not uh, improving. It is rather deteriorating. The reason behind that, you know, the utilization level of the industry as a whole for the economy as a whole has not improved. And a lot of corporates are in the process of deleveraging. So they are not in need of large capital base. Rather, they are trying to repay some of the debt. So uh, on one part, there is a troubled asset uh, going up. On the second part, there is loan growth, which is not happening. It, it has been very muted. So the fall in stock prices and uh, maybe, you know, uh, kind of you know, corrections uh, is kind of, you know, is factoring to some extent. But my sense is that, you know, there would be possibly more slowdown in the next uh, couple of more quarters in banking, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, banking stocks earnings. And uh, based on that, I think uh, that uh, in the near term, you may not see much of, you know, upside in the uh, BFSI space and banking stocks. But having said that, uh, possibly uh, whatever corrections we saw recently, we may not see sharp price corrections here onwards. It will be more of, you know, time corrections going ahead. That's what I believe. Right. Um, you said the earnings uh, shall be muted. Now, uh, this is largely because of the demonetization impact or uh, do you see uh, this uh, muted earnings continuing for some time? Because, you know, uh, uh, consumer financing may some, take some time to uh, come back to normal because that was the book that was really growing for uh, the banks. Uh, the corporate side in any case wasn't growing. Credit growth has been weak even up to September. So uh, will these uh, muted earning growth continue for some time or is it just going to be a short term phenomenon? Uh, I think the earnings growth for banks, if you observe last two quarters, uh, was already under stress. And in fact, for last two years itself. And last two quarters, the large part of the profit that we, whatever we saw was also contributed by the treasury gains. As we know that, you know, GSEC uh, yield has fallen and treasury gain has been one of the big, like, you know, positive factor for PSU banks. So, assuming that uh, PSU banks tend to book that profit during this quarter and in Q4, so there onwards they won't have much of treasury gains also left on their book. So, the core earnings growth, which was already slowing down, if further slows down, then possibly the earnings growth will not look much better in FI18 itself. Now, Banks as a whole uh, depend on the two things. Either they have to earn interest or they have to earn a fee income. And both depend on the loan growth. Okay. And if loan growth is subdued, say somewhere close to 5-6% and your cost is going up, then certainly the earnings growth cannot pick up. Now look at a scenario where your deposit growth has like been tremendous because of demonetization. Uh, in fact, a lot of money has come into the banking system, but there is no corresponding demand for credit in the system. If you observe the last uh, fortnight's data, credit growth has been just 5.5%. And if I just, you know, observe in the next two, three months, possibly there won't be much of credit demand because of the kind of you know, lack of uh, demand for consumption as well for investment. So maybe if we remain that, you know, 5-6% kind of you know, loan growth for FI17, and on top of that, because of like, you know, lower utilization level, maybe, you know, the similar, similar range of loan growth for FI18, 
and cost pressure mounting on banks, then possibly PSU banks will not be in a position to report even decent earnings growth. And on top of that, what I was talking is that you know, as per the financial stability report by RBI yesterday, what it is clearly mentioning that the stress level for the banking system is not going to go away anytime soon, rather it will go up. That means the provisioning requirement will go up in FY18. So possibly what we might see is that you know, another washout year for next year uh, for PSU banks. But only comforting factor is that we have already seen a lot of price corrections happening in those kind of you know, stocks. So maybe there will be more of time correction rather than price correction right now. But uh, and a good part is that you know uh, the retail side, uh, the retail loan growth was uh, had been strong for last uh, like you know couple of years, and that might come back after a couple of quarters, right. which has taken a kind of you know, hit during this uh, one month. What about the NPA situation? You know, um, while the RBI has given leeway for repayments of uh, uh, loans because of the demonetization impact. If uh, uh, the slowdown is more protracted, if companies aren't going to get their cash coming in, uh, does default rise? Because we were you know, speaking with bankers, asking them, has the NPA cycle bottomed out? They were saying, maybe, maybe not. Uh, if stress is there, which the RBI is reporting, um, how long will it take for the NPA cycle to turn and uh, for how long will it depress the profitability of the banks? See, the NPA situation to my view has really not uh, like, you know, uh, really uh, got over. Uh, the RBI has given some leeway uh, for NPA recognition because of uh, the cash flow mismatch due to demonetization, but that's a temporary measure. For uh, the solution to NPA, there has to be uh, uh, like an you know, ability on the part of the borrower to pay on a regular basis and for that the business sentiment has to improve. And uh, if you look at a lot of corporates so like you know the kind of you know uh, commentary that we are hearing is that not much of corporates are really seeing improvement in their uh, kind of you know, utilization level. So while this uh, like you know extension of you know uh, payment for this 90 days will help uh, some banks you know reporting or maybe an extending NPA situation for some time but that could come back the trouble might come back later on so uh, my sense is that you know possibly uh, maybe another one year we might take I mean I I may not be able to give you the exact timeline because the economy itself is going through a transition phase right now post demonetization but now my sense is that you know in the absence of credit growth when your business is not growing and cost mounting and provisioning going up in the entire situation, bank's profitability is not going to improve in a big way. Only a couple of banks which are uh, focused on retail could sail through the difficult situation and they will be, which, which are again, you know, well capitalized, like the private sector banks, like, you know, maybe SDFC Bank and ICIC Bank, the leaders in their respective, you know, uh, sectors could sail through the difficult phase who also have a decent, you know, uh, retail as well as, you know, corporate, uh, like, you know, portfolio. So they could sail through and, you know, report decent number of you know number in fy18 but that also will not be as expected as earlier because of the slowdown expected in consumption also lot of lot of individuals have deferred their uh, consumption and investment uh, uh, requirement for the timing so there is a pent up demand but it will uh, probably come up at a later stage so it's too early to say that you know that uh, np situation is over and how I you, sense that how you know, do you view some of the yeah, private right. banks like Yes Bank and Indusind Bank? Now, HDFC is slightly different. Uh, they are, a lot of people say their banking system is a little different. But HDFC consistently does uh, plus 20% uh, uh, growth every quarter. Uh, Indusind Bank and Yes Bank also show strong uh, loan growth every quarter. Uh, do you think now there will be a moderation? Uh, how would you view these kind of banks? Because, uh, you know, even the consumer side um, is low. For uh, Indusind and uh, Yes Bank, their, their uh, corporate book is quite large and they still manage to, uh, you know, uh, give out those loans uh, and their stress also, stress tasks are also low. How do you view uh, uh, HDFC Bank, Indusind Bank and Yes Bank? See, SDFC Bank has really th done a phenomenal job if you look at uh, many years. I mean, they have been uh, like, you know, growing uh, on a sustainable world, uh, way for many years and they can do it. O uh, obviously, there will be some moderation in the growth that we have uh, reported, like, you know, that we have seen in many years. 
because of uh, the demand for retail credit also has gone down to some extent. But looking at the capital base and the ability of the bank in the last uh, many years, I think that you know maybe you know that 15-20% uh, kind of growth is something that SDFC can, can, bank can do. And uh, if you just observe like you know within their uh, corporate portfolio also, they have been largely financing the working capital needs, not the project financing. So as and when business environment improves, then working capital requirement will go up and uh, SDFC bank would be in a position to kind of, you know, uh, push their credit growth on a better uh, foot. Now, coming back to Yes Bank, as you said, like, you know, Yes Bank has really done a very phenomenal growth as we know in last many years. And we, even in last quarter, the growth was much higher than industry, more than 30 percent. But now the bank might look forward for uh, some moderation in growth, uh, looking at the stress level in the industry and the like you know uh, perceived risk in uh, like you know financing to certain sector uh, so from if you ask me uh, purely from investment point of view i would go for a bank uh, like you know sdfc which has already uh, has a tremendous record of you know uh, outperforming the industry no doubt the stock has not participated in a big way in rally but it has not fallen also relatively it remains much insulated so I would be in favor of buying SDFC. Uh, obviously, Yes Bank also has, uh, like you know, uh, become much uh, like you know attractive now in terms of valuation. But we would wait for uh, maybe you know this quarter result how it is panning out because of their you know large exposure to corporate side, and then after that we'll take a call. Uh, Indescent, I don't have a uh, coverage, so I'll not be able to uh, give a comment on that. Uh, one last word on the PSU banks. You don't expect um, the credit growth to look up. Uh, you expect their profits to be under pressure. Uh, then um, they also uh, are in dire need of capital. Then what happens? Uh, does it come from the government where the government uh, is stating that they do not want to increase their stake too much? Would we see consolidation, smaller banks being bought by larger banks? What's in store for PSU banks when it comes to capital and consolidation? See, consolidation has to happen, but it will not happen in a hurry. It, it will take time. But in the meantime, PSU banks will need capital to meet their day-to-day -day business growth and if at all they want to grow. Because see, uh, for a couple of years or maybe in a couple of quarters, banks in general had been struggling for deposit growth and that was one of the reasons you know, uh, that you know they were not able to grow business. Now that deposit has come back in the system, but there is not enough capital. So for growing, they need capital, and uh, I don't think PSU banks are looking at the, their balance sheet health or maybe you know, their financial health, they will be in a position to raise capital from the market. So the only source would be government. So I think uh, purely government has to come forward and you know, uh, infuse capital for growth of PSU banks. But if you ask me what is the outlook for in terms of growth, in terms of business and all, maybe a lot of PSU banks are also dealing with their own NPA issues and their own structural issue. So they are not really looking for big growth in uh, next year itself, uh, bearing very few uh, PSU banks. So uh, from pure earnings perspective, there is not much of growth happening. So if at all there is growth, then accordingly government can fund. And you know, possibly once the cleaning up process is done, then PSU banks might be able to raise capital of their own and you know look for further growth. But in the ne near term, the outlook really doesn't look uh, really great for PSU banks. On a relative stand, private banks, mm, even though they will also have tough time going ahead, but they could do uh, much better than uh, PSU. So we'll stick to private uh, banks for the timing and will not uh, go and buy uh, PSU for the timing. All right. Thank you so much for speaking with us at NETV Profit.